Loki and Pierce Morgan. And no, not the Loki from Avengers. Not the Loki from Thor. Loki, who's an activist, also a rapper, appeared on Pierce Morgan and they had quite a uh, heated discussion here. And I love the fact that Loki really called out Pierce Morgan. Like I told you guys about Pierce. They had a particular heated discussion here. Let's go ahead and dive right in, folks. Pierce versus Loki. Round one. Your feeling about where we are now with this war and indeed the widening conflict conflict with Israel apparently planning a, a ground incursion into Lebanon. Well, that initial interview, there were three things that I stated which have since come clearly to fruition. So the first thing that I stated was that Mark Regev belongs in The Hague. Israel is currently in the ICJ charged with genocide. I also said that what Israel was doing in Gaza in an accumulative way over decades would amount with the military operation that they were about to launch to genocide. And the third thing that I said, which, was, which has also now been proven to have been the case, is that the Israeli military unfortunately implemented the Hannibal Directive on October 7th. And that, just so viewers are aware, is when Israel, a key, of course it was um, initially developed in Lebanon while trying to suppress the Lebanese population and stop them from battling the Israeli occupation. Um, and it's whereby Israel takes measures to kill the captives who are Israeli that have been taken by the other side. Now that happened on October 7th and it's since been proven in three different cases. It happened unfortunately after it's um, been denied by Israel, to be clear. It hasn't, though. It's been denied by certain upper echelons of the Israeli uh, political mm. establishment, but there have been key figures um, uh, it, within the Air Force that have acknowledged that this has taken place. It's also been revealed by the Al Jazeera mm. investigation and other places, too, have gone but very you deep but into you it. But you wouldn't say that the absolute vast majority of people killed and wounded on October the 7th were indeed killed and wounded by Hamas, because... Apart from anything else, Hamas were boasting about it and filming it as they were doing it. I think actually the majority of people that were killed on October 7th and off the back of the October 7th were the Palestinian fighters that entered into what is considered to be Israel. But we know because that... Because they were killed, they were run over by cars, they were, their bodies were dismembered, there's footage that came out of them being um, killed. Many you feel, you feel sorry for the Hamas... No, I'm stating in. objective facts as a journalist that has researched this topic. But what about the 1,200 people who they murdered and the 7,000 no, 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 no. they wounded? No, no, no. Hundreds of those people were killed when Israel implemented the Hannibal Directive. That's, that's simply not See, this is the part that uh, the Grey Zone had talked about this, Electric Intifada had talked about this, and this is the part that people like Pierce Morgan don't want to admit. So you also have to keep in or take into consideration that some of the people that were at that festival were also IDF soldiers. So remember in Israel it's required that you serve as part of the IDF. So this is another part that's not mentioned. Now this is not to say that Hamas did not uh, commit violence that day. They, they did kill people that day. There is evidence that shows that. However, I still disagree with that 1200 number when you look at all the other pieces that are put together. So when they say that they killed 1200 civilians, some of those people at the festival were not civilians, they were IDF soldiers. And that's what people have to take into consideration. So there's that. Loki brought up a, a good point, which is that some of the people that were killed were the fighters that came into Israel. So some of those people were also killed in this fight. Let's continue. True. It simply is true. It isn't. And I, and I encourage you, in the spirit of journalistic inquiry mm. and curiosity, to <laughs> really look that up. It's already because been it's, thoroughly investigated. It absolutely has not but been. But it, ha it has, no, It's been investigated by Al Jazeera. It's been investigated by trustable news sources that have found this to be the case. No, it's not true that absolutely. hundreds of people in those you named the casualty numbers on the Israeli side were killed, were by, Israel. killed by Israel. No, it's a fact. It's, it's a documented not, it's fact. Not a fact. It's a documented fact. And, and you know what else? If you were to study 
those cars which were put forth as evidence that Hamas had killed those people fleeing the Nova Festival, mm. the order came directly from the Israeli Air Force. This is a mass Hannibal. This is a dead zone. No cars will Did you pass. watch the documentary? Cars Did you watch the documentary last week on BBC Two? No. About no. about the, the music festival. Right? You no. literally see Hamas fighters with their GoPros going from car to car murdering people. That happened. Yeah, that happened. Why are you trying to diminish what the scale of what was going on? I've just so that's the other thing, too, that I think like people like Pierce don't understand. I don't think anyone who's a part of the pro-Palestine movement is rejecting that. I don't think anyone's saying, no, they did not kill anybody at all. I think what I've heard from most people is that there's evidence that shows that basically when you talk, remember, they kept changing the number from 1,400 to 1,200. When you're talking about like that 1,200, what they are saying is that there is evidence that shows that Israel also implemented the Hannibal Directive, which they admitted to, they had finally admitted to, after people said it last year and were smeared for saying it, and which means that they killed some of their own people. Now, why would they do that? That is done to prevent capture so that they would implement a Hannibal Directive to kill some of their own so that they would not be captured. So that was confirmed in Haaretz. Israel was finally admitting that they didn't admit it last year when other independent journalists had called that out. So what Pierce gets wrong is when he pokes at people and says, but do you condemn Hamas? Do you condemn Hamas? Do you condemn? What he gets wrong is he thinks that all of us are saying that they didn't kill anybody. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, is that number one, they didn't kill everybody. Number two, some of the people were killed by the IDF, which they finally admitted after all these months. And number three, not all of those people were civilians. Some of them were IDF soldiers. But Pierce likes to take it to the other extreme and say, oh, you, you guys said nothing happened. Said that happened. That doesn't equate to diminishing what you've just said. It doesn't stated. say hundreds you're of hundreds. diminishing. You're diminishing Apache helicopters bombing cars that contained civilians. You're diminishing all of the Israeli captives that have been killed by Israeli airstrikes. Israeli captives have come out of Gaza and said very clearly that actually they were scared of being killed by Israeli why, airstrikes. Why are there hostages at all? Well, this is, of course, an issue of 70 years of occupation, of dispossession, of ethnic cleansing. You wouldn't support the taking of genocide. hostages, including Holocaust survivors and babies. You wouldn't support that. I wouldn't take hostages, no. So should they hand them back? I think if you look historically at where the return of actual hostages has happened, you look at the case of Gilad Shalit, this was a case where an Israeli soldier was given back in exchange for the release of Palestinian prisoners. Mm. What you've actually seen in this case is a massive increase of Palestinian prisoners who are being tortured. There's been examples of rape mm. within um, yep. Israeli military camps. The rapists have come out and become celebrities within Israeli society. 68% yep. of the Israeli population say they oppose the prosecuting of people that have been implicated in rape within the dungeon system. And if you really look at it, Israel has far more chance of returning hostages by negotiating for their release than by airstriking them. But what Israel has done as part of this campaign is airstrike and kill its own captives. The captives. How would you have responded side. on October the 8th if you were running the Israeli government? Ultimately. The biggest terror attack on your ultimately, people ever. Ultimately, ultimately, it is within the interests of everybody especially those who identify as Israelis currently, to end Zionism. Zionism has dispossessed and disempowered and killed people on an industrial scale. Its maintenance requires four generations of Palestinian refugees scattered throughout the Middle East. The highest population of refugees there is in the world. Its maintenance requires the constant repression of Palestinian uh, hopes for uh, a better world. Which I think is completely wrong. So mm -hmm. I believe all Palestinian people should have exactly the same rights as you and I and every and, Israeli. And that requires the end of Zionism. So therefore you okay. support the end of Zionism. Well, I don't agree with what has clearly been a form of occupation, okay? But putting that to one side, 
I also don't agree with Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis, funded by Iran, armed by Iran, launching wave after wave after years and decades of terror attacks do they on have, Israel. Do they have do you, air do you, forces? Do, do they you, have... Let me ask you a question. No, no, let me ask you a question. Let me, let me ask some questions. Like, do they have air forces and ask, air defences? Let me ask... Do they some, have air forces and air so defences? So it sounds like you're defending what they do. No, I'm saying there is a complete difference between one of the most powerful armies in the world, mm. which has literally... Uh, a key unit within the Israeli military, Unit 9900, mm. is the visual unit which uses satellites mm. in the sky that can pick off a bit of chewing gum yep. on your shoe, OK? Mm. You're yep. talking against about actors that are shooting rockets which do not have pre precise mm. um, targeting against one of the most powerful air forces mm. in the world. It sounds F to me, F-16s and f 35 You're talking about asymmetrical warfare. But you know, the thing that Israel doesn't remember and which Israel has to know and must know, mm. that winning a war is not about killing on an industrial scale the weakest among the population you are targeting, which mm. Israel excels at, which is the essence of Zionism. Mm. Winning a war is about the largest amount of people being convinced of your viewpoint. If we use that metric to understand this war, Israel has lost in Gaza and it will lose in Lebanon because Israel has more enemies around the world than ever before. More yep. people are critical of Zionism than mm. ever before. More people understand it to be essentially an anti-life ideology, which is causing mass human but at the same suffering. But Loki, at the same time, Hamas... Hezbollah are wedded and make no secret of being wedded to the destruction of Israel. The destruction. Mm -hmm. That is a nihilistic form of genocide. The very genocide that his supporters, <laughs> like you, would say is being waged against their people. So do you see what Pierce is doing? So now Pierce Morgan is pointing towards Hamas and Hezbollah and saying that they want the destruction of Israel, but not pointing fingers at Israel that is actually doing the destruction. It is the state of Israel that is actually killing people in Gaza and in Lebanon and Syria, you know, and it's it's the state of Israel that has been the aggressor. It is the state of Israel that has occupied land in, 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 in Gaza, that has occupied land in the West Bank, that has occupied land in Lebanon. It is Israel that has done those things. I mean, last time I checked, I don't see Gaza occupying Israel. So this is what I've said before about the people, and particularly the commentators that are pro-Israel or try to pretend like they're not, but they really are pro-Israel. They want you to believe that what has happened, what happened on October 7th in Israel, that is the greatest tragedy in the world. While you turn a blind eye to a genocide that has been occurring since October 7th. They want you to feel more pity for the Israelis than they do for the Palestinians and for now the Lebanese and the Syrians and everybody else that Israel's tried to occupy and control. That is a colonizer mindset. People, they are explicit. We want the destruction of Israel. And they have tried to enact this on October the 7th. And Hezbollah's response the next day, within hours, was to unleash rockets on Israel as well and to carry on doing it for a year. At some point, Israel obviously was going to respond with massive force to the biggest attack on its people. Obviously, they were going to do that. Hamas knew they would do that. Iran, who were funding it, knew they were going to do that. Hezbollah knew they would do that. Hezbollah knew if they kept rattling the Israel cage with their rockets, that they would get a response of the kind we're seeing now. What they underestimated is that Israel would be quite as successful as they're being right now with Hezbollah and taking out all its command leadership. And you can... Uh, Hezbollah just killed uh, eight IDF soldiers. So um, I think this interview may have been recorded prior to uh, when that happened. But again, you cannot sit up here and point out just Hezbollah sending, you know, uh, trying to send rockets towards uh, Israel without pointing out the fact that without the occupation, Hezbollah doesn't exist. Without Israel occupying that part of Lebanon, there is no Hezbollah. 
There, there is no Hamas. So Pierce wants to start after occupation. Everybody notice this, that Pierce Morgan wants to start post occupation. Feel that the momentum has switched now where Israeli people in particular and all the polling are now beginning to go back to supporting Netanyahu because they believe, rightly or wrongly, but they believe Hamas and Hezbollah when they say we want to destroy Israel. They believe it and they believe that they have to defend themselves. Do you understand that? I people? have a response. The Likud platform, mm. which is its charter, states very clearly there will be no Palestinian sovereignty between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. The Likud mm -hmm. Charter calls for the complete obliteration of Palestine and all of the rights of Palestinians. That is the core of the issue. One group that you're talking about don't have air defences and do not have an air force. And you, but as you are know, internationally but on, isolated. As you know. And are internationally isolated. And yet there was the somehow... The other one and yet has the support of the United States, fine. which has... Over uh, around a thousand military bases around the world, right. and of course, all of the largesse from literally the US mm. after Israel has taken its terrorist actions, which the mm. former head of the CIA, Leon Panetta, called it a form of terrorism in Lebanon with the pager attack. Right after that, the US has said it's going to give $8.7 uh, billion in military aid mm. to Israel. Was what Hamas did on October the 7th an act of terrorism, then? I would say that. Before um, Loki responds to that question, I just want to say I want you guys to notice something that Pierce Morgan did there. When Loki pointed out what the Likud Charter says about the destruction of, of Palestine, notice Pierce Morgan doesn't respond to that. Notice he doesn't say anything about that. Now, the number of times I've seen him on this show uh, point out what the old Hamas Charter says uh, but when someone presents to him what the Likud party, which is the present party right now, and their present current charter says about the destruction of Palestine, Pierce Morgan has nothing to say. Why is that? I'm going to show you in just a second. I told you guys about Pierce Morgan. The killing by the Israeli Air Force of Israeli citizens was an act of terror. I would say that Palestinians who have lived in camps mm. for several generations. They're not in our shoes. They're not living the kind of lives that we live in the places but we haven't that answered we my live. Question. But I'm answering your question. To a Palestinian who has suffered mm. their entire life under the boot of Israeli occupation, mm. what you view as justified will not be what they view as justified. Well, I'll ask you what the you very think. same way, I'll ask you what you the think. very same way mm. that you denounce figures mm. and uh, define them depending to these particular uh, legislatory uh, definitions mm. throughout history. The no, very same people. I understand. You compared yourself to Nelson Mandela. I understand. The ANC would, were absolutely treated in exactly the, the same way. And the British government called the them FLN were treated in exactly the same way. The Vietnamese were treated in exactly the same way. Okay. I'm speaking directly to your point. You're not, in fact, You're not William, my Cuffey, William Cuffey of the Chartists, mm. these were people that mobilised for hundreds of years I know to, get the like right to, vote, to get the right to vote that didn't own property and were not landed gentry in this I country. Do you know what happened to them? They were imprisoned as terrorists. Okay. They were massacred at the, I, uh, I know the same at Manchester. I know the same history you do. But I simply asked you, given that you categorise what Israel did to Hezbollah with the pages, whether you said it was an act of terror, whether you think what Hamas did to Israelis on October 7th was an act of terror. As I said to you then... The picture is not clear of what exactly Hamas oh, did to on, Israelis. Mike. There were lies about 40 beheaded babies so that were response... pumped out all over the place. Yeah. No, no, no. There was so much fake news and lies mm. on what happened on October 7th. How can we? How can we have actually you say... The, have you watched the Hamas footage that they took themselves? Seen bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Yeah. Literally bits and pieces of people's bodies. No, 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 no. No? What, what really? I don't understand... You haven't seen what it, have I you? don't understand. What, what do you I don't want to understand. see? I'm happy to see it, but what I don't understand, no, as in I would like to see these things, but what I'm saying to you that you are seeming to minimise, in my opinion, mm. is the fact that the Hannibal Directive was implemented. If the Hannibal Directive so 20... was implemented, if I'm a about fake to read news you something. campaign was rolled out... I'm about to read out, you something. Read. A July 2024 Haritz investigation 
revealed the IDF ordered the Hannibal Directive to be used, adding, Haritz does not know whether or how many civilians and soldiers were hit due to these procedures, but the cumulative data indicates that many of the kidnapped people were at risk exposed to Israeli gunfire, even if they weren't the target. In other words, there may well have been a directive issued, says Haritz, but nobody knows whether anyone was even hit or killed. Look at you, the cars. But Look you, at the cars hang fleeing on. the Nova Festival. I've watched the video footage of what Hamas did to people in the cars. But here's my <laughs> no. point, Loki. The you watched the video footage that was given to you by pro-Israel accounts. You watched the video footage that fits that narrative. And this is something that Loki's going to point out. I want to pull up this clip here. Um, because it's true. We need to talk about why people have these narratives that they have. And I always told you, follow the money and look at who's funding these people. And I want you to see uh, who was funding uh, Pierce Morgan. Let me get this up here on the screen as well. Just going to go to this part right here. Do you condemn Rupert Murdoch? What's it got to do with me? Do you condemn Rupert Murdoch? I'm not talking about Rupert do you, Murdoch. Do you, do you condemn Rupert Murdoch? I'm not talking this about here, Rupert Murdoch. This, this has never been shown on British media. This is a letter from Netanyahu's political office. And Bridget may well recognize the handwriting of Benjamin Netanyahu okay. here. It is a list of individuals that <laughs> Netanyahu considered to be funders of his political campaign. There is a name on this list. The name is Rupert Murdoch. Your employer. You know what, Loki? It seems he funded Benjamin Netanyahu. You, you That's what, an issue. You know what, Loki? It's not an issue for me. It's an issue, Nobody and actually it's in the no. interest of objectivity Understand one thing. that you state it. Rupert Murdoch can speak for himself. If you've got a problem with him, take <laughs> it up with him. I do. I yeah. can tell you categorically, he has never had a single conversation with me about anything I've put on Piers Morgan Uncensored. S Sam Kiley Ever. resigned Ever. from the Times newspaper Ever. because of Murdoch's investments Fine. and bias if towards Israel. If you have a Israel, problem, this, this document, this letter, you're a rapper, clearly right? shows... Benjamin Netanyahu noting okay. Rupert Murdoch, considering him to be a funder of his okay. political campaign. So I'm going to pause here for a second. I told you guys about the connection between Pierce Morgan and Rupert Murdoch. Yes, Rupert Murdoch was his boss. Uh, yes, even when Pierce Morgan left Talk TV and decided to focus solely mainly on uh, Pierce Morgan uncensored, uh, there was still information which I presented on the show that showed that uh, he was still connected to Rupert Murdoch uh, financially because even Uncensored is supposed to be a subsidiary of one of Rupert Murdoch's projects. So I told you guys about that. What I did not know, I did not know that Rupert Murdoch donated to Benjamin Netanyahu's campaign. So this is a problem, fam. Because when you think about all of the shows on talk TV, when they talk about this issue and they all have the pro-Israel perspective. Now, Pierce ain't with them no more. He went on to Pierce Uncensored, but still he has the same perspective. So don't tell me there's not a conflict of interest. There is a conflict of interest. So I didn't know Loki was going to show up with the letter, but you know. You're a rapper. Yeah? That's an issue. You're a rapper. You condemn P. Diddy. Yes. Great. You see how easy it is? You take it out of your obsession, which is that you hate Israel so much you can't condemn anything that people do to them? We see the situation differently. Not really. My, Actually, my, my loyalty is to the people. I agree the with you a lot my more. Loyalty I agree the, with you a lot I, more than you realize. I, 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 what I, view I, don't myself, agree with, I view myself as loyal to the people of the camps, to the people mm. under the bombs. I do not view myself as loyal to somebody well, that would end up on a list of potential funders right. of Benjamin Netanyahu. I, I, <laughs> and you should have seen that you, well you did see you saw the look on Pierce Morgan's face when he uh, pulled out that list and said look who donated to Benj Benjamin Netanyahu oh what do you know Rupert Murdoch you saw the look on Pierce's face like <laughs> oh buddy